through line that I like that we didn't mention was um, him always adding salt and pepper to his mom's food. And then when he funny. had food with the black people one time, he was like, yeah. this He was like, no, this is actually good. <laughs> this is easy. This is so yeah. pretty. The poor mom like, tried the new, like, egg frittata. He drowns it in ketchup. I was like, I Ooh. know. I was like, I was also like, because I cook more than you. I was like, how do you mess up an egg frittata? It's yeah. like literally eggs in a pan. Yeah. Hi, I'm Danielle. And I'm Del. And this is the Black Catch-Up, where we're catching up on iconic black media we missed out on in our more conservative religious childhood. So today we did something a little bit different. Watched a, yeah. a new Netflix series. Yes, Colin we watched Kaepernick. Colin and, yeah, Colin and Black and White. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, as always, IMDb, this drama, this drama series from Colin Kaepernick and Ava DuVernay explores Kaepernick's high school years and the experiences that led him to become an activist. Mm, okay, okay. So, yeah. It's a drama series. Cool to know. Okay. So, uh, we start off with our favorite things. Why is... Um, Okay. Yeah, yeah. Or things we liked, I guess. Same. Yeah, things we liked. Yeah. Um. I guess I'll I'll kick it off. Um. Mm -hmm. I liked how they like said things, or I guess Colin said things like very directly. You know, when talking about like you know the the black experience or the biracial experience growing up. Yeah. You know, like he talked very directly about like experiencing microaggressions or like experiencing flat out racism or like yeah. You know those kind of like underwritten codes when people say oh be professional kind of thing. So I thought it was good that yeah. he like spoke very directly and then like we flashed to like him as a young person and got like a very real example of it happening, you know? So I thought yeah. that was just like a very good way to do that. Like say it, example, and you know, like just don't sugarcoat anything. Just kind of like put it exactly how it, how it happened kind of thing. Yeah. I said one of the first things I thought of when I saw the series with that was that this gives me very much blackish vibes. Mm. Not in terms of like it's a comedy or anything like that, but just kind of the way it approaches issues where you kind of get that historical like narration and a little bit of clips and stuff like that and examples and then it like takes you into the story and how it all like kind of builds up and stuff like that so I just thought it mm -hmm. gave blackish vibes and that was a very good thing I really liked it like I know yeah. they have different people people at like the director's helm and all that good stuff but I just think the vibe of it overall was very blackish and that was very good yeah I definitely see that too <clears throat> Are you next? Uh, oh, no, I think you're right. I think that was the first one. Oh, that was my first one. I just said it had blackish vibes. Oh, oh, okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, my, my first one was I'm saying it directly. Okay, so um, uh, what was my second one? Oh, I really liked his um his long-haired friend. I don't know the kid's name. But uh, the... I don't yeah, either. The, yeah, the, the kid with the long hair. I thought he, like, just, like gave really good advice like yeah. kept it real with colin when he like needed to hear it you know like yeah didn't really like again like didn't sugarcoat anything like you know but also didn't try to like do anything he wasn't capable of like you know there were kind of those situations in, like the hotel with the baseball team where he was kind of just like hey like it sucks like i understand like it's because you're black like i know yeah. that but like there's not really anything we can do you know which i guess is kind of the response that is I don't know. I guess like that, there's not much you can do, you yeah, know, if you're like a, a friend of yeah. a friend of someone kind of going with through this. So I just thought it was like really good how like he was portrayed in this and how he like, you know, was encouraging, but also kind of like, you know, make because he also had the thing where he was like, I don't know, is he flipping tires or something or like selling tires or something that he didn't want to get yeah. Colin involved in. So like, I just thought he was a good friend overall, like throughout the yeah. whole like, series. I liked him too. Um. Uh, the first episode, like, I'm now getting into episodes that I really liked, but the first mm -hmm. episode about, uh, Colin and his hair just really resonated with me. Mm -hmm. I think black people have a very complicated and, like, story relationship with their hair. So just the process of him, like, wanting to try something new and, like, going to a friend's house, because, like, that is how black people get their hair done. You do just, like, mm. go to friends' houses or, like, word of mouth, like, oh, my my friend can hook you up and do your hair, too. And then him, like, it being too tight and him not liking it. And um, then try and then um, going to the 
it was kind of like a beauty supply store, only a little bit bigger. It was like mm -hmm. a store store as well. And then like him meeting the barber and then like kind of him seeing people who look like him for the first time and kind of like starting to figure out what he wants to do and like Hair is a really big form of self-expression as well, mm -hmm. and there's just so many nuances to it. And I think it did a good job of like kind of putting all that in like a 30-minute episode to yeah. like him being devastated when his uh, parents were like, "Yeah, you look like a thug," or like "You look unprofessional," or whatever. Like, and just the hopelessness he felt that like these people who were supposed to be in his corner weren't like fighting for him. Like, mm -hmm. that was a dumb shit rule saying that you need to cut your hair yeah. because it like. I don't even know what he did. It was in like Bray, it was in cornrows and he, if in theory, he could have like just put that into like a little ponytail in the back and like twisted it up so it wasn't like getting in the way of like being able to be visible behind his neck. But like no one offered him those solutions. And like even at the end when um the woman who braided his hair in the series comes back and like starts to cornrow his hair at the end, I just thought that was really good and really enticed me to the series. Yeah, nice. Um... I really liked how the mom and dad were kind of portrayed um, and just kind of how they like represented that kind of like oblivious white parent that doesn't really know how to handle these issues but like yeah. is kind of trying their best but like severely falling short kind of thing. Yeah. So um, yeah, just especially the especially the mom on that one. I think the dad was probably a little more neutral on that in that sense but um, the mom definitely was like, you know, that like I just want what's best for my son but like I've been whitewashed and I am white, so like that's the only thing I can yeah. see, kind of thing, you know. But yeah, for her son, was, that really wasn't the case, or wasn't what yeah. he wanted, you know. Yeah, it was very eye-opening seeing a lot of the microaggressions come from home, like the monsters mm -hmm. inside the house. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I also, say it was. I did like that they noted that. Um, I guess the parents didn't actually sign up to get. Colin they signed up for another yeah. kid and just like that kid that was through, heartbreaking my god yeah yeah it was but I, I will say I do always I have like, questions that's... like you know when like there's like a white couple adopting like a black kid so like yeah it, it was I guess good to know I guess I don't know yeah it definitely made a lot of the arguments that they had make sense especially like the hair one just because mm -hmm. like the part that devastated me the most in that one was when they made him cut it and they like made him go to super cuts and I was like you couldn't yeah. even let him go back to the black hairdresser to get like rid of the hair like y'all hate this yeah. kid but like i guess now that you mention it hearing that it kind of puts it into perspective because when you do have like white people or parents or guardians in charge of like black children it's like you need to like be ready for what you're signing mm -hmm. up for like there's so <laughs> much that is part of their experience that is not going to be part of yours so i guess that kind of answers the question of like why weren't they more prepared for this? It's because they didn't. Yeah. This isn't what they wanted, were going to prepare for. They were prepared for like a white kid and they got to just continue doing their little white thing and white. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess, did you have anything else? Uh, yeah, if, in, the, in, in just saying my favorite episodes, I also like the episode where he decides he wants to be a quarterback and he um, just starts working twice as hard to get half as far essentially where he goes to that like training camp and oh my gosh that awful racist coach who was like yeah but this guy he was our guy and the, everyone else was like yeah. hey dude were you on the same field as us Kaepernick like destroyed this kid now like, was that his no. son was that his son I thought I heard like a son no, in there early on his son. oh I don't know why I, I thought he was he, the coach's son I thought I heard I that he like early on racist and this was the white kid that he yeah. liked the most oh okay, was like, okay I can't have this team blacked up I can't have this yeah. team black like <laughs> He was Damn. like, but this is my guy. He's the quarterback. And then Colin was like, okay, I'm going to like do this. And I'm going to be mm -hmm. on the, the quarterback for the team next time. And he was like, you know what I like about this guy? He doesn't try to be better. And I'm like, what? That's an awful thing to like. Yeah, about yeah I like, remember that too. <laughs> I was like, I was like you're saying these like regular doing? ass characteristics. Like, yeah, he shows yeah. up. He's on time. I'm like, no, <laughs> not what you want. <laughs> Meanwhile, Colin's like, I'm trying to be the best I can be. And I want to like mm. go beyond this team. Like, granted, while I'm on this team, I'm going to do my best. But I'm like always looking forward. And I'm like, ambitious. Good. He's like, I don't want ambition on my team, son. And I'm yeah. like, ew. <laughs> And then at the tryouts, he was like, yeah, this is my guy. And meanwhile, the guy hasn't, like, thrown a pass that anyone caught in the past, like, ten runs or whatever. Mm -hmm. And the guys are like, uh, remember when Kaepernick said that he wanted to be on this team and he, like, worked his ass off? Like, why are yeah. we not? What? Like, yeah. but I just liked that. It was a really good episode. I also liked the last episode where he was trying so hard to be scouted by, mm -hmm. um, I know 
so little about football and sports in general. So when he was like trying to get scouted and like the process of him like putting out all his little like demo DVDs yeah. and um <laughs> and like just the constant everyone saying and he got accepted to like every single one body wants him to play baseball for the, him. What are you gonna do? Are you like once baseball baseball mm -hmm. decision day comes up and you turn it down for football? What are you gonna do when no football team wants you? Just yeah. like that whole like um underdog story granted i did kind of i don't know if this is a cheat or spoiler but i definitely looked up colin kaepernick in the middle of that episode i was like he oh. definitely <laughs> gets on a football team but like which one yeah <laughs> and then they like said it and i was like oh yeah yeah i was tempted Obviously, to look yes. it up but held out i held out to the end i was like okay he went to nevada <laughs> cool. was too impatient. i was like football he definitely plays like what, what does this yeah. and then yeah. it also had me thinking i was like if you don't get into college football the first time like how do you do that can you just like come the next year like what yeah, I, I guess i don't, I don't know, know. What I, was doing. I don't know really but either. i <laughs> what spoiler i looked up that he went to nevada yeah i was like is nevada does nevada have a good team i don't know like the only team people i know who would for sure have like a good team is texas because texas is such a Football, football state. state, yeah. So I was like, yeah, they would totally like Texas is like the dream, I guess, or something else. But who? Some of that football talk went right over my head. Yeah. <laughs> uh, did you have any other things you liked? Um, not. I don't think so. Yeah, I think that was all I had. Oh, I also like the premise of it in general of Colin watching his story. I did like the premise. Yeah, I did like that okay. too. I thought it had a very like interesting perspective to it. You know. Yeah. <clears throat> so negatives um yeah i had like the one thing i had i don't even know if it's that big but i thought the balance of like social commentary to like colin's life was kind of off like in the beginning i felt like i got a lot of social commentary and like very little like clips in the flashback so it felt hard to get into like that like show part of it and then toward yeah. the end it felt like all show and like no social commentary and by then i was like oh i was like appreciating all that like raw like hey this is how it is not sugarcoating my experience kind of thing and yeah. toward the end it was like just about him playing football and i was like eh, i don't really care about that as much anymore you know? but, um, <laughs> yeah, that, that was kind of the main thing that made my main problem with that i just thought like the pacing made it feel kind of weird oh my thing on the pacing was i thought that sometimes it relied a little too heavily on the narration mm -hmm. and i probably would have preferred to watch Colin Kaepernick's experience more. I don't even. Now that you mention it, they, they were very off with the social commentary. But like once you get to the end, I kind of felt as though the narration could have like petered off more, mm -hmm. so that if we are just paying attention to his story, we don't hear actual Colin Kaepernick speaking it, and we just get to watch actor Colin Kaepernick acting it. Just something about it in terms of like something was off to me. I guess in terms of the flow of mm -hmm. like between the narration and the comment, something was off to me. Yeah. It wasn't my favorite. I definitely would have liked less narration, but that's definitely something I say all the time. So yeah. that's not new. <laughs> yeah, like there were definitely times where it like felt like a full on like documentary, and then other times where it just felt like a regular like Netflix show. You know? Yeah, I think that's what it was. I was <laughs> like, what? Uh, sometimes it didn't feel like. That's why when I read the IMDb, it was like this is a drama. That was kind of news to me. Because yeah, yeah. it seemed kind of like a docu series, but also mm -hmm. it seemed like a regular TV series. So to that point, my other big gripe was it wasn't as entertaining as I wanted it to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, I, I agree. <laughs> so <laughs> and I, I, I try my best, and I don't think this has to do with me not liking sports. That no. <laughs> I don't think that's what this is, because I can like sports content because they tend to like boil it down to only the exciting parts, but. I guess it just was very sad to watch this because it was this like little kid learning about racism because the like mm -hmm. racist things were happening to him and like yeah. I don't want to watch that I lived that like I don't I don't want to watch racism yeah see that was the other thing like I don't know if I was the audience for this movie because like watching it I TV felt like show. like I, know, I know this stuff like this is the stuff I go through you know like being yeah. the only black person in predominantly white space like I know all this shit you know like yeah I'm I like, deal with this is... like in my real life so like I don't know I, I don't know if I was the exact audience for this you know yeah and um I I understand that Colin Kaepernick probably wanted to tell his story in this way but he just was telling the story more or less mm -hmm. and it wasn't like 
I guess when I think of people who are telling their story for like film, they kind of either exaggerate things so that they're more dramatic than they were, or they make it funnier than it was or something like that. But it kind of was like, no, I just went through this and it sucked. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I know it's, it sucks for me too. <laughs> See, and I think I think he kind of made it, like, sadder than it was. Because, like, he was sad in most of the movie. But then you, like, hear oh, about yeah. it. And, like, most of it was, like, like, again, like, microaggressions and everything. But, like, again, once you got past, like, those first couple episodes and it was just him, like, having a shit ton of baseball scholarships but wanting to play football, it was, like, why are you so sad? Like, I understand why you're sad because you want to play football. But, like, yeah, this isn't a relatable, like, I can't relate to that <laughs> sadness of you being, like, oh, I'm a three-sport athlete, but I only have scholarship for two of them. You know, like, so I don't know. Like, it, it just wasn't too entertaining. And, again, he was just so sad the whole time. Like, yeah, I understood it, but, like, he was sad the whole, like, from start to finish. It's, until, like, that last thing where he got that call from Nevada, he was sad pretty much the whole movie. I will also say, and this could be mean, but I realized I hadn't heard Colin Kaepernick talk before. Um, again, <laughs> that's not to say his voice sounds bad or anything. But yeah. um, I realized I had never heard him talk before because, again, I don't watch any sports. So I know what he's doing. I know he's, like, a huge activist at this point because he doesn't play football anymore. I know he was the one who was kneeling. Like, I know about him. I just have never heard him talk, never saw him play, literally nothing else. So yeah. the last episode when he wrote the letter to himself... I didn't like it. I didn't either. I don't know. I don't know if it was like the writing skills that he like gave his. Uh, I didn't like that letter. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't, I didn't like it at all either. Cause like I, I don't know. I didn't, again, like I didn't think it had much to do with like the the show or like any. Like I just I didn't. I didn't think it was necessary. I didn't. Yeah. It was, it was just weird yeah, to yeah, me. Yeah. Because when he first walked into the screen or whatever, I thought he was going to hug his little self. And then he sat down and wrote a letter, and I was like, okay. And then he was, like, narrating the letter while he wrote it, and I was like, I don't like the sound of this letter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't even like the message of the letter. I forget what, like, it started with. But it was, like, repeating some phrase, like, don't give up or something like that or believe yeah, in yourself. Yeah, it was like, you're going to go through pain, and, and you just need to pay attention and focus and hard work, and you're going to make it through this. And I'm like... I hate this letter. No, it was so, so generic. Much. It was so generic. I was like, what? Like, it was he was like, you're going to you. embrace your blackness and da da da. And I was like, yeah, that's good. And he does all those things. But yeah. it didn't tie. It was so generic that it, I don't think it tied into his story specifically. Mm. And it was just so like, blah, of a letter. I was like, oh, God. Yeah, it made the last I, episode clunky trying to fit in like the letter like into it, too. Like, I don't know. Yeah. It just made the last episode feel kind of clunky to me. Yeah, and this this series already kind of moved a little fast for me because it's only six episodes, thirty yeah, minute yeah. episodes too. So when I first saw six episodes, I was like, "Oh, they're gonna be like an hour. This is gonna take forever." But it did not. It was no, it was, a it was very pretty quick. quick watch. Yeah, it was very quick, very quick. Uh, but yeah, it wasn't the most entertaining watch, and I hated that letter. Like, yeah. <laughs> mm. <coughs> I don't know if he actually like wrote this letter himself for the series or something, but. He needed someone to like look over it again, someone to workshop it with. Or just, or <laughs> just nix the letter, just nix the letter, do a regular episode. You <laughs> didn't yeah, have to do anything like did. that, you know? <laughs> yeah, but I don't know whose idea the letter was, but uh, shame on you, yeah. I did not like it. Yeah. Ratings. Um, yeah, yeah mm. ratings. Um, yeah, I'll give this one a two and a half. Um, mm. Again, I just don't think I was like the audience for it, like. Mm -hmm. I imagine there was, like, a lot more football fans who were, like, huge Colin Kaepernick fans and, like, were more on the fence about his kneeling thing. You know, like, I'm, at, like, I'm talking about, like, more, like, white fans, I, I assume. Oh. You know, like, <laughs> like, me, like, I'm very much on Colin's side. Like, yeah, me too. You know what I mean? So, like, for me, like, listening to him, his story was, like, just okay. It didn't do much for me. Like, again, like, i have gone through most of these microaggressions myself. You yeah, know, and I've had to live with them. So like watching someone else do it like didn't do much for me. And then like again, the whole storyline yeah. of him like being a great baseball player, but wanting to play football, like I didn't care too much. Especially since like I know the end result is that he goes to the NFL. So like, yeah, it wasn't even like there was like was any like, suspense like, there, you know? Yeah, I was like, why are we hemming and hawing about this baseball thing? He was like fully in the NFL. Yeah, it's like we know he goes to the NFL. Like, <laughs> so like, why are we wasting four episodes on the baseball thing? I will say I did. I think my favorite episode was that like baseball tournament one. When they show him like getting like sadder and sadder every week 
at the tournament oh, yeah. as he like deals with shit. That, that was probably my favorite episode. I and that was like where I thought episode. like that's like a lot of social commentary in that one, and then it kind of like tapered off toward the end and like in other yeah. episodes, you know. But after that episode, that's when I was like, this show was like kind of sad. Like, yeah, no, it was why just sad. Is it, was, it was definitely sad. It was definitely sad. It was it was pretty sad for a show where someone ends up in the NFL. Yeah, about a yeah. person who ends up in the NFL. N- not to say that, not to diminish his like struggles as a black person, as a mixed person, as an adopted person in a predominantly white space. Not to shit on that, but like, it was very sad, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Very, very sad. sad. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I I gave this a three out of five. It was just, it was it was it was kind of light and easy to watch. When it got to just mm. the football stuff, the social commentary was, it, it was done well, but it was inconsistent, I guess. And um, I guess my big ding is that this wasn't as entertaining as I wanted it to be. And I almost feel as though I'm kind of the audience for something like this, as someone who knows <clears throat> virtually nothing about Colin Kaepernick and was like, this seems interesting. I would love to learn more about him. Uh, you, It almost kind of... Um, he kind of keeps a wall up a little bit so that we're not getting like his whole heart. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. I don't even know if that made sense at the end. Yeah. Guys, we've I mean, been filming for like an hour. Yeah, no, this is a long, <laughs> not long this day. Not in particular, but we've been filming for an hour and I don't even yeah. know about this show anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you could probably wrap this one up. But that was yeah. that was um, what was it called? Colin in black and white. Yes, Colin in black and white. <clears throat> um, YouTube housekeeping, like, comment, subscribe. Ring the bell for notifications if you have any movie suggestions for us, or I guess TV series now because we're kind of slowly dipping back into that. Yeah, you can leave yeah. them in the comments down below. We do movies on Tuesdays and Fridays. I don't know when this will come up because of the TV show, but it'll come up at some point very soon. Um. All of our socials will be linked in the description box down below. And we'll see you next time to catch up. Bye. Granted, sad that he's getting his hair cut either either way. Like, no bones about it. That's bad. But, like, y'all couldn't let the black people do it. He could have had a nice little, like, fade or um, definitely, like, cleaned it up to, like, make the... Like front lineup kind of thing, yeah. Yeah, like they couldn't even do any of that. He just had to go to super cuts with the white woman who was like, yeah. Was like and, I, and I saw that and I was it. like, yeah. oh. Yeah. I saw that and I was immediately like, oh, this is sad. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was sad the rest of the series. Yeah, he was sad too though, so it's all good.